Oh, this is really nice. You're gonna look, you're gonna look really good. <laughs> you're already just gonna add some pink to highlight your already sexy pink. You are so cute in pink. Welcome back to another episode of Made Up. I'm your host, Danny Volk, and we're in the studio of the artist, The Astor Gates. Thank you so much for letting us in your studio. My pleasure. This is your private studio, right? It is. In this larger building that was the Anheuser-Busch... Distribution warehouse. Okay. Yeah. And it was one of several, but it's maybe their key one on the south side. And so now what are you doing in this building? It's just, you've got every inch filled. It's really beautiful. Yeah, I think that a big part of my practice uh, needs for me to accumulate things in order for me to extract some things and, and make new work. And so um, we've used it really as a kind of staging space for new projects, both for museums and outside of museums. Well, in terms of accumulating, I brought you some other stuff to uh, very mess nice. around with. Very nice. You have some makeup experience? No, but I, you know, I have a good intuition about these things. All I right. think I can figure it out. Danny, are you ready to be made up? Let's do it. Okay. So I did hear that recently you did have some work related to makeup. Yeah, I like a makeup. Show a couple years ago. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot about um, uh, fashion fair. Um, you're a little light for the collection, but okay. not completely. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, I, I've not. Give you some bronze. Please do. Bronze. I've, I've decided to not do a tan this summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How are you? How are you avoiding that? Hats. I just don't leave my house. Oh, um, the Johnson Publishing Corporation gave me um, a large collection of their archive, including a bunch of books and um, uh, their periodicals. And, um, and then just in trying to make uh, Johnson relevant in the UK, I decided that I would also take their existing uh, makeup line, which is um, quickly being eaten up by uh, other makeup companies that are interested in brown bodies and brown faces. Mm -hmm. I thought, man, it would be really great if we could add value to, to what they're doing. So you're a professor at the University of Chicago. I am. That's pretty new. You recently taught a seminar course to the first year MFAs. Yeah. How'd that go? I think it went really well. I heard a lot of exciting stuff. People had to give, well, you were like, do you guys have hobbies? Right. We interviewed Zach Harvey on this show. Oh, good. And so he was like, the was like, do you guys have hobbies? You need to get some hobbies. So everyone had to start a new practice. What's that? Gold. Lipstick. Anything you want it to be. Honey. So how do you like teaching at the university? Uh, it's been amazing. I've always had kind of a loose relationship with the Department of Visual Arts, even when I wasn't uh, faculty, full faculty. I was um, kind of deeply invested in the work that they were doing. But now I feel like um, uh, in this moment with uh, kind of what the future of artistic practice is being such a toss up, that it feels like a good time to, um, you know, uh, pollute the minds of young people, bring them, uh, bring them forward. So do you think that the university is a good place for those kinds of challenging ideas about what art is now? I, I do. Really I mean, I, th I think that, you know, universities are about their faculty, right? And I think there's a way in which the, the faculty and the Department of Visual Arts, uh, we're all grappling with our own senses of uh, what's at stake and, and no one's really middle of the road about it. And so the great debate isn't just uh, between students and faculty, it's also between faculty and faculty about mm -hmm. um, what the stakes are and, and why. And I think that um, the students get to see that play out, you know, but I, I think also for these kind of um, These kinds of interviews mm -hmm. if you will that the university um, I think that it's uh, It's wanting to think differently about how new practices emerge and what conversations happen and, and you know in order to do that I think you you really do need both great faculty, great facilities, and great students. You know? So I feel like we're also attracting amazing people from around the country who are interested in the work. How do you feel? Am I, um, am I poking too hard? No, am not I being at all. gentle? You're very gentle. Oh, good. Good. 
You can learn a lot about a man when he puts makeup on another man. I work at the Graham Foundation, and there's a lot of buzz about the Chicago Architectural Biennial. Yeah. And you're involved in that. Can you tell me what's going on? Yeah, so, so one, God bless Sarah Herda and Michelle Boone. I mean, they're just like dynamos. When they asked me if I would consider having um, Dorchester be a part of what they're doing and Grand Crossing as a site for um, the biennial, I thought, man, this is really, this would be really cool. What it would signal is that um, not only Grand Crossing, but the South Side is a, is a place where great things can happen mm -hmm. and where great things should happen. You're also the director of Arts and Public Life. That's right. All of the projects that I do, they tend to bleed. Mm -hmm. They bleed together. And, um, and I think bleed in a really good way, that there's a, a, a kind of healthy synergy between the things that happen, say, on the block and, um, and then the things that happen at the incubator and that. And so we're trying to figure out what are the role, what are the ways in which the university kind of can participate. And I think, you know, just in terms of like the history of um, concepts of space around the city, good and bad, I think that the University of Chicago has this like complicated relationship with the city. And so I'm, I'm really excited to tease that out, but also to think about um, how the space available in Hyde Park might be an interesting, might be interesting spaces for stuff to happen. How's, how's the makeup job coming? You're looking great. Yeah. You're actually, I mean, you were handsome when you came in. Um, I'm learning a lot about myself. You are? Yeah, I'm learning a lot about myself right now. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Yeah, I'm kind of really into this goatee. I had a mustache for a while. How'd that go? People loved it. People loved it. And then when I got rid of it, you know, I got taken off of contact lists everywhere. Oh. No, it's hard to have been beautiful. <laughs> you know. It's one of life's greatest, you know, Sadnesses. Yeah. I mean, I feel fortunate because, like, um, you know, I'm only now coming into my handsomeness. Uh, I didn't have to worry about being beautiful when I was young, but <laughs> these days I have to fight them. How do you life. manage it? It's tough. I just kind of make myself, I just stay in the house. I just stay in the house. Well, tell me what you think of this makeup job. It's like, um, it's like meso country. Yeah, it's like folk. You know, it's like the people, you know? Every day, you look like an everyday Egyptian. Do you know that's my last name? Tell me, yeah, Folk. exactly. Man, I, didn't, I wasn't even thinking about that. You did it. Oh my god! Didn't have to think about it, you that got it. That's really great. This character looks familiar. Oh yeah? Like a pizza villain or something. Oh, maybe. I like that, yeah. I like that. Yeah, Dr. Sausage. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us in your studio and my for pleasure. giving us your time. It's yeah. very nice of you. And um, I'm wearing this to my meeting after this. Oh, good. No, I think you look great. I have a presentation to give at the Gram. Oh, so. good. I, I hope that goes well. I'm sure it will. My best to your teens. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Dan. This has been Made Up with Danny Volk. We'll see you next time. Just